The last couple of weeks in this video game industry have been quite simply chaos. That, that is the best way to describe it. I myself have had my own health issues, challenges, probably the most challenging 60 days of my life, but it is awesome to be back talking about gaming news, and I felt we had to start here. We had to talk about some of the recent events, as right now there is a literal war going on between gamers and it seems like journalists, developers, and how games are being made. It was specifically on the DEI part, the diversity, equity, inclusivity, and all that type of stuff that has become a lot more controversial in the last couple of years. Uh, I look to a period about 10 or so years ago, games like Borderlands, Mass Effect, Gears of War, diverse, you know, inclusive, but there wasn't any conversation really about that stuff. There wasn't uh, any outrage over that stuff because it felt organic. Nowadays, there's been a lot of conversation about different games just feeling like things are being shoehorned in. It doesn't feel organic. It feels inauthentic. And it feels like a lot of game developers, some teams are just pushing stuff in there for whatever reason. Some of it de definitely does feel like agenda driven, especially after you play certain games like Saints Row in which you're being lectured about student loans and certain parts of society. Ubisoft is notorious with that. Far Cry 6 had a whole uh, subset of missions about a certain character. That was something that felt very off. And there are various games uh, Suicide Squad in recent weeks has sparked a lot of controversy because of some of the writing within some of the character descriptions. Toxic masculinity was mentioned as some a part of Wonder Woman's description. There was something very odd about Green Lantern. And then there was also very early on in the game, Harley Quinn makes a big point about her old scandalous outfit being uh, problematic, I guess, or she doesn't like it anymore. And it definitely feels like this is just one of those modern audience things. So yes, there's a lot of frustration with modern gaming. Some of it definitely feels a little absurd. Some of the criticisms, I mean, uh, especially with some of the other big releases, I do feel like some people are just taking uh, narrative decisions and calling it as agenda-driven uh, problematic nonsense, when in reality, it's just, again, it's narrative decisions that people don't like. But... A lot of the outrage that has been coming about is in regards to Sweet Baby, a consultancy firm, uh, which all over their website, they have mentions of diversity, inclusivity, adding that to games, and they've been trying to fight those accusations. Uh, their portfolio of games isn't exactly very impressive, and I'm going to have a very big deep dive into that company in the coming days, but I wanted to specifically concentrate on this. A former developer of Sweet Baby, in which, uh, yeah, th this is what they had to say. This is, this is problematic, and the way the games industry has covered this is just, it's mind-boggling, in my opinion. Well, let's play the audio. I have a team of 21 right now uh, for Validate. It's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team for indie games. But who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people. Mostly, all people of color. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment... Just understand that first part. Imagine if any other race was mentioned here. They wanted to have no white people on the team for to have a safe environment. Think about how that... Think about what that ism is. And to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Um, and I'm not saying that white people in the industry are creating safe, unsafe environments. That's exactly what she said in this. Uh, this these remarks is coming from Danny Lalanders. She, again, is a game developer. She is currently working for Cliffhanger Games. She is a narrative designer on Marvel's Black Panther. She is somebody who has uh, input into the story. We don't know if that's the main story, side quests, or whatever. But she has a role in the, the narrative of that game, which calls into question everything that she does. I don't believe she has a leadership role, but anytime she moves up in the electronic arts, there should be questions about her role because of remarks like this. Remarks that should be getting outrage from this gaming industry, but has been met to silence. Electronic Arts also has had no comment about this. And I don't even care that this is libs of TikTok or whatever, the account that, that made this known. Who cares? They put this out, this is their, their own words, and uh, yeah, it is a major fucking problem. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something may be okay, but it was really a microaggression. And no one wants to deal with that while they're trying to make a game that they love. 
You know, there's a certain word, a certain R word that would describe what this individual just said. And uh, usually this gets people fired from their jobs, but this individual seems to be going up. Uh, these remarks were made, I believe, a couple of years ago when they were a part of a small indie team. No idea how they even got hired. No idea how these comments have not been red flagged. But I do want to point out how Games Media has just said absolutely nothing about any of this. Uh, this is Wired. Wired has had some very interesting takes in recent years in terms of the gaming industry. Last year we had Hogwarts Legacy that was very controversial at the time, and uh, this is what they said at the time. Review, there is no magic in Hogwarts Legacy. The game is mid at best and its real world harms are impossible to ignore. They gave the game a 1 out of 10. That is agenda driven fucking nonsense. And at the time I did make a point about this, and this is exactly at the time why I said Warner Brothers wasn't giving out review codes earlier because they knew that people weren't going to review the game. They are going to talk about the outside stuff and then incorporate that into the scores. Uh, yeah, they wrote, uh, tired, the story is rooted in anti-that tropes, the gameplay feels dated, the graphics feel blah 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 blah, every character feels like an off-brand version of the characters we know and love, there's no sense of place, no magic, no heart, and uh, this review couldn't be taken seriously, and that's why Wired, whenever I see their gaming takes, I do not trust it, and this is yet another example of it. The small company at the center of this, uh, Sweet Baby, it only employs a couple dozen developers, but the conversation about Sweet Baby, the consultancy firm, it's going widespread. This isn't just about Sweet Baby, this is just in general about the gaming industry. I don't think it's specifically uh, about this specific company. I think that's what a lot of gaming developers, a lot of gaming journalists are concentrating on. It really is just the conversation about how games are being made and the... Uh, the narrative ideas that are being focused in these games in which they feel very inauthentic compared to say 10 or so years ago in which there wasn't these conversations as they weren't happening as often but it's this specific part here they mention this video they say libs of tiktok <laughs> they mention whatever that's their description of them uh, they go on to say they are currently targeting a former Sweet Baby developer who has since gone on to another studio for speaking about creating a safe environment for a team of color. That is their description of that video. Not that, you know, it's definitely that R word because it certainly is in my opinion. But the problem with that actually I, I do need to mention is the fact that we have Kotaku journalists such as this individual who got ratioed and uh, had community notes here saying, no, you cannot be R word against white people. Thanks for tuning in. That's absolutely insane. And this was in response to somebody bringing up that the Sweet Baby founder about a decade ago had some very interesting tweets about white people. Uh, it's just absolutely insane how uh, certain games journalists, uh, this perspective, and it definitely is a major problem and calls into question their opinions and uh, anything that they say about gaming or really anything in general cannot be trusted. We also had another gaming developer, this guy I believe worked at Warner Brothers, Naughty Dog, one of these big studios recently. Now he works at Brass uh, Entertainment, and he said the same thing. You can't be that word to white idiots like yourself, but you can be that to white non-idiots either. Blah, 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 blah. It, it's a perspective that, for some reason, a lot of these people that, I guess, live on the West Coast have. Uh, it I definitely feels like brain rot, in my opinion. But uh, definitely, I don't think that this is just a conspiracy, a cabal of consultancy firms that are making games woke. I think that this is just a lot of people with uh, perspectives that definitely are clashing nowadays with what a lot of gamers want from experiences. And uh, I do think there are a lot of voices that are being silenced and a lot of voices that don't want to speak up because they are in fear of losing their jobs with psychopaths like these individuals that have made clear that anybody who has a different perspective, they are not welcome. Remember that Hogwarts Legacy lead developer who I believe he had lukewarm conservative views. We talked about this extensively at the channel. He ended up having to quit the project because they were accusing him of being alt-right and all kinds of other isms and accusations that were not true. And that's just how games media is nowadays. And that's why a lot of people are very dissatisfied with the state of journalism in this industry. But I do want to continue on again. This is something that he also said, the same individual just talked about a second ago, a developer saying, game companies, this is the best time for you to make a statement about your commitment to EE. I, nobody is saying this because they know that this would be immediate backlash. This is the best time for you to support your developers and reassure them that you won't bow to the mob. We will remember the companies that stayed silent when we needed them most. I believe this is also the individual that started that major petition for uh, Six Days in Fallujah. You remember that? A military shooter about the Iraq war met to a lot of controversy from, you know, these same individuals. Uh, yeah, they... 
I guess this is his perspective right now on this matter. And I do want it to be known that this narrative designer on Black Panther had a lot more to say. This coming from That Park Place, websites covering a lot of this recent events. Uh, yeah, they had a lot to say. Gamers have been really that word lately, and I'm trying to ignore it, but it's hard not to when I see it sometimes. So if you're wondering if their perspective changed at all, it's been, you know, a couple of years, I believe. Uh, doesn't seem likely. Just creating problems in your head. I don't understand the outrage over video games, especially games they have no interest to play. I just stopped taking uh, y'all seriously when y'all start running around saying white people can experience that word because I did not suffer through 2020 for y'all to act like you weren't an ally. Uh, posting that tired blah 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 screenshot. Uh, the Google definition of that word, I just don't care anymore. And then somebody rightfully points out saying, so being appropriately called that word is tiresome, huh? And they say, yeah, I'm that word, so what now? If you think you can be... Uh, they continue with that again. They just continue doubling down on that. And they were actually interviewed in 2020 by a Gaming Magazine saying, In gaming, there are very little black characters. It's effing ridiculous as black people. We have to come to terms that people are just not going to eff... See, that is... A tire that is not true at all. We have to start, people have to start fighting back against these narratives that these individuals keep saying. They're just making up stuff. This isn't 2002 anymore. There are many black characters, many black focused games. Uh, I mean, some of the best characters of all time are African American. It's just insane that people just keep on lying with stuff like this. Uh, and I feel like that's the stepping stone for every black person's life, especially as a black non-binary woman. Uh, people are going to hate me because I'm black, because I'm non-binary, because I'm a woman. I don't give blah, 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 blah. They continue on. Um, people are already getting mad at it because it has no white characters in it, but that's kind of the whole point of this game. I guess this was their indie project in the past. I guess she says it's a point not to have white characters in it. Okay. Um, first of all, if you think there aren't great black and other people of color out there, you are lazy, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think anybody's saying that. And if you're looking, you're ignoring, I'm very visibly black and proud, and I missed out on opportunities just for those reasons. I think that white people and non-black developers need to do better. If I, an amateur game developer who's going, uh, doing this for the first time, can find a full staff of 23 people of color, you can do the same. Although, this individual specifically said that they went out of their way to not hire white people, which uh, does seem like a lawsuit would come from that, as that does, you know... Uh, you know, I think that's kind of against the law, pretty sure. But they continue, black gamers are a very rare category because the gaming industry is so that word. That is, again, not true at all. It's really important for black gamers to get together and show support for one another because it's hard out here when you want to enjoy things, but people are being blatantly, and again, they keep saying this without any proof or anything. It's just hard to have fun when everything around you is hate. And um, I would agree with that actual last part, but I think we have different perspectives of what they mean by hate. I think that there's a lot of individuals just lying, especially this individual. I think that they are exaggerating how this industry currently is. I know these remarks were uh, made back in 2020, but I personally still find that absolutely ridiculous. And um, their perspective definitely is not clearly laid out here because all it sounds like is this individual is making accusations while also at the same time doing that exact same thing against white people by not hiring them and going out of the way not to include white characters in their game. So uh, make of that as you will. That is this individual's perspective. Clearly has not, it doesn't seem like it has changed based on the recent tweets, but uh, definitely something that is a bit eye-opening and there is a reason why many people are asking Electronic Arts for some sort of statement or something about this, and I don't think we're going to get it. I do want to continue because, again, it's... It's not just the single developer that has this perspective. We had Marvel's Wolverine's associate narrative director uh, attempting to defend Sweet Baby by gaslighting readers and... And they, they talk about the consultancy work. We're going to get to that in a second. But I do want to go over some of the other remarks that they've said. Uh, Wokeness is killing gaming. They put in quotes. Here we go. I have avoided the conversation around Sweet Baby for so long, but now it's getting out of hand. Basically, when a game is being made by some people, they will hire them to help them writing dialogue or character design of certain types of characters. Spoiler alert, usually involves stories and characters that isn't the default. Now, anti-woke people call it one of this... And they flock it to, like, flies on a turret. They'll tell you that they're the reason Kill the Justice League and Arkham Knight are bad games. They'll say the reason why Spider-Man is dating a deaf woman, why Joel lost in golf, and why they can't blah 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 to their favorite characters. And it all sounds ridiculous because from the bottom of my heart it is. But they don't mention that they worked on games like God of War Ragnarok, Alan Wake 2. They won't tell you precisely 
what they worked on, what pieces of dialogue they did out of the game, how because they don't know. It's not public knowledge. Some of the clowns are even going as far to say they are the reason the layoffs, which makes no sense. And I do think one of the major issues with Sweet Baby, again, is the fact that their website is literally just plastered with, we are all about diversity, inclusivity, we're going to add this to stories. And we also have consultants and various individuals, controversial figures like Anita Sarkeesian in the past, saying that they are all about diversity and trying to make sure that gaming companies do it right. But that's the problem. Do it right. What does that mean? And that's the thing. A lot of these gaming individuals, uh, journalists and such, websites, they have a vision of how it has to be done. And if it's not done their way, then we get articles uh, that we've been talking about, the controversial ones, the ones that have a very biased perspective on matters such as this, in which they're calling this a that type of campaign, an H-word, a har harassment, I'll say that incorrectly. But I hope you understand that that is the... That's how they're going to describe this, even though 99% of the individuals that are commenting on this matter, it's just criticism, but it's that 1% that they're going to latch on to, and that's what we've seen that's been happening lately, uh, which is hilarious just because Hogwarts Legacy, it's like a completely different matter, in which 99% of it was literally, that was a harassment campaign against anyone who enjoyed the Harry Potter game. Again, look at this. Remember this. Have they streamed that wizard game? That was their way of boycotting and then threats and all kinds of stuff were made. But gaming, uh, these gaming companies, these gaming websites did not cover it that way. Now we will continue. Uh, if you are still confused as to why something like this would exist, let me break it down to you. And they bring up two scenarios. I'm going to go over the second one here. They say, yo, we got this character who is a young black gamer in Los Angeles. Would he say something like this? I say, hmm, we kind of over pronunciate our R's a little bit more. So it wouldn't be brother. It would be brother. Now, those movies, those shows, they come out. Some of them might still be trash. Some of them might be hits. But I did my job. The rest is up to them. That essentially is what Sweet Baby does, I guess. Well, Spider-Man 2's case, they couldn't figure out the right flag for their uh, Latin character, but whatever. Uh, that is no, that was, that is no way, shape, form, fashion, an issue with gaming. And then they concluded, in fact, it helped us to get more interesting, better characters, or else every character in the video games would still be Aiden Pierce from Watch Dogs or Old Boy from Days Gone. Sorry, that shit is boring. And again, this is the same perspective that we get from a lot of these individuals. We talked about this with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order when there was controversy over Cal Kestis, uh, him being a white male lead protagonist. So many people, so many different uh, individuals that work in this industry industry were outraged over it again just having a white male lead is considered boring nowadays because i personally think that the male lead from uh, days gone was actually very interesting aiden pierce personally not a big fan of him myself but uh, i just love the fact that anything that is not white is considered a more interesting better character which is just it's hilarious to me it's ridiculous but that is this individual's perspective they do go on talking about the process and again i will say i do agree with some of this i do agree with the fact that i don't believe sweet baby is just concentrating on diversity inclusivity and st i'm sure they're doing a lot of other different work but the problem is that again the gaming world all they have is their website which is uh it's kind of a disaster in many ways in which it doesn't really lay out what they exactly do other than the fact that, well, yeah, they do a lot of diversity and inclusivity and it definitely creates that image that that's all they do. Now, does continue because a former Bungie lawyer, or I guess he still is a Bungie lawyer and Pokemon company lawyer, defended the company also recently saying that his job was to get rid of anti-woke gamers. Just, it's really insane some of the perspectives that are being shared on this matter. He goes, he goes on to say, I produce Detective Pikachu. My real name is blah, 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 blah. I spent 12 years as the chief legal officer of Pokemon, and now they're general counsel of Bungie. Uh, he goes on. He also defended, again, the Kotaku individual that we just talked about a bit ago. They say, uh, 20 years in game, 17 in the sweet suit. So I am well situated to say these people blaming one cult consultancy for everything they don't like are, again, demonstrating they know nothing about the subject they purported to be discussing. They are that, and then they just make blanket statements about the 270,000 plus people that are protesting Sweet Baby. And again, it's really not just about Sweet Baby. It's about the general gaming industry right now and how a lot of companies have been really shoehorning a lot of diversity into these games and it just doesn't feel authentic. Uh, it does continue, and it never occurs to them that the reason nobody made games for them was because nobody wanted to make those kind of games. I mean, 
let's be honest, a lot of games were being made for these individuals, and they still are. Nobody wants your money because no one wants you in their environment. Take it from someone. Most of those jobs was figuring out ways to get rid of you. Insane individual. Uh, trust and safety departments exist to get a-holes out of, out, out of the gaming industry or environment. You end up creating them to get rid of a-holes because adult humans don't want to spend their leisure time with a-holes. You're a bad F off. Nobody wants your money. Go spend it on anime that. And it goes on. This individual very uh, upset about this matter. By the way, if you're effing crying about the fact that I'm telling you to eat that, think about why you're such a person that the producer of Detective Peach Kikachu thinks you're a human garbage and maybe work on being less that. Uh, you complain about bubbles, but you're living in the biggest one. You dorks it around self. You kind of get what he's going after. Um, quite the perspective here from this individual, a bungee lawyer, but things are getting quite nasty. And I do want to point out again that this is, this is quite the mess. I'm going to have an extensive video about Sweet Baby, how all this started, and how there's just a lot of lies being spread around this situation. It really is disgusting in so many ways, but I really wanted to hit home on this specific video just because of how disgusted I personally am with this. And now very much concerned about Black Panther. Uh, we don't really know much about the game. I think there was like a little teaser video that we did get from it a while ago. Uh, this company, Cliffhanger Games, has not said anything about this video, and I doubt they will, because I bet you internally they're probably just concerned about the developer, not concerned about the actual perspective that they have about it. And uh, yeah, Black Panther, we de are dedicated to delivering fans a definitive and authentic Black Panther experience, giving them more agency and control over their narrative than they've ever experienced in a story-driven video game. Wakanda is a rich superhero sandbox, and our mission is to develop an epic world for players who love Black Panther and want to explore the world of Wakanda as much as we do. And again, I do want to point out also that Black Panther... This is a character that, yes, is going to be probably a very black-focused experience, but it also is a character that was created by, I believe it was like two white dudes all those years ago. So having a team full of very diverse, different voices, I think that should be encouraged. But uh, saying that no white developers should be working on certain projects, I don't know. Seems kind of problematic, and definitely seems like this certain individuals, like this individual, should not be working on a game like this just because it calls into question their judgment, and also if they ever, or if they even have a leadership role, I don't know if they can be trusted, but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. Definitely something that has been blowing up in the last couple of days, and I really did want to provide my perspective on it. I'm going to be having a lot more coverage on this situation as it just continues to blow up all over social media, and really, it just is awesome to be back. It's been too long, I think six weeks, and just so many different things I want to talk about with gaming. It's not just going to be this matter. We'll have all kinds of coverage coming in the coming days. Make sure you are subscribed. Uh, like the video if you did enjoy it. And again, follow me on Twitter, social media. I give a lot of different perspectives and stuff. I'm very active on there if you have any questions or such. But again, just great to be back and I'll see you guys later.